We're here at AQS Quilt Week in Des Moines, Iowa, and I get to do the interview with the best of show winner, <laughs> Janet Stone. Thanks. Well, you know what? It seems like we're making a habit of this, it's right? It's okay. It's okay with me. <laughs> I don't mind. Well, this is another outstanding quilt, and it was entered in the stationary machine quilted yes. for large quilts yes. mm -hmm. category, yep. wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Well, and so it's another alphabet. So yes. tell us a little bit about what you did to design this one. Uh, this one was inspired by antique wreath blocks. I had seen a quilt on the internet somewhere of an antique quilt that had these really neat wreath blocks. And I thought, I, I remember taking a picture of the, the quilt I saw on the internet and writing on there, wreath blocks with alphabet inside. <laughs> so <laughs> you already was, had the idea. That was my, my <laughs> original inspiration. So yeah, it just kind of took off from there. Oh, well, and I think the quilting on this one really adds a whole lot more than some of your other quilts. I agree, thank because you. There was more space, There's more space, really. which yeah, I yes. tend to fill up a lot of space because I don't, I, I'm never confident about my quilt, uh, quilting design. I my skills are okay, but the design, I'm always a little bit weird about. I, it's, you know, I've always say it's like layers on top of layers. You have to think another design layer with the quilting on top of the quilt itself. But I tend to, on this one, while I was making the quilt, constructing the quilt, um, after designing it, I was, it, I kind of things kind of clicked in my head as to how I was going to quilt it. So it was a little bit easier, even with all the space on this one, it was a little bit easier to figure out what the quilting design was going to look like on this one. Now, one of the things you always do is add some sheep to your always, quilt. Yes. So how mm -hmm. many sheep are in this one? There is just one in this one. <laughs> it is on the O block. I couldn't get it on the S, but you know, ovine is actually sheep. So <laughs> oh, is it? oh, yes. Okay. <laughs> so that, but yeah, I had to, had to add one, but there's just one on this and one. So he's kind of just tucked actually, into that the, pretty actually, little there's, uh, a there are several on the back of this quilt. I always like to do something interesting on the back. There are several quilt, several sheep on the back of this quilt. So. Applicate one? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I didn't look yeah. on the back. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yep. Well, and you have a, a rather unique edge on this quilt. And mm -hmm. um, as, as we were looking at the quilts earlier with some ladies who had walked through here, I said, okay, so now one of the secrets you need to know is that if you're not real confident in having a straight edge, then don't make it straight. <laughs> true. That's true. Yeah, with the rounded corners. Yeah. Yes. And I, I think originally I had designed this quilt. I'd always designed it to do the rounded corners because I, I like that. I've done it on a quilt before. Um, uh, and I this was going to have straight sides to it, too. But when I got to where I was doing the quilting and stuff, I thought, oh, maybe I should just follow the designs there on the side and do a little bit of something extra on the side so yes. it worked out well but yeah originally it was supposed to have straight sides too well it does add an extra little, it does, yeah, a little it's, extra it's a little punch different. to yeah. the edges yeah, of the quilt I, I like the way it turned out yeah thank you well so how long did it take to make this one oh Do you, know? you know i, I everybody wants to I know, know that i usually kind of keep i don't keep track of hours i keep i write down when i start and when i finish and i think this one was roughly around eight months I know I was in the process of finishing it when I got laid off from my regular day job for the pandemic. <laughs> so I was I had a little extra time to finish it with, but uh, yeah, I think it was about eight months, give or take. Okay. Yeah. All right, so is there anything other special that you'd like to point out? Well, this one, um, there's a little bit of a, um, uh, like a, I call it a faux trapunto, but I think you told me one time, because I did it on another quilt um, where I uh, did like a, in these channels, I did like a, uh, after it was quilted, did a yarn yes. inside inserted yes. in there? And so that needle. is real, tri real trapunto when you insert. I know. I think you, you said insert. that before because I've yes. done that before. But I, yeah, that, it's not like the kind of trapunto where you do it and then you cut off the back, you know, yes. and then re it. It's just after yes. it's done. It's like years a, ago. That's how they always did it. Is I, they would quilt a channel or yeah. a shape and then go back with yarn and fill it. And I think years ago it was probably easier because the fabric was probably a little looser woven, so it was yes. probably easier. It's a little harder now with the fabrics to get, you know, yeah. to not make a hole in it so to speak but. and so did you use like acrylic yarn yeah, uh -huh. to do yeah, that yeah just like a yeah inexpensive acrylic yes. yarn yeah well and for those who are watching the faux trapunto that we do on a lot of the quilts today is they'll use a layer of cotton and then a layer of wool on right, top right right yeah and and quilt down real heavy yes, around yeah, it and then yeah, it does look like trapunto yeah, yeah. yeah so that's the faux you did yeah. the real thing on this one <laughs> it worked i, I kind of like doing it it kind of fills up those little quarter inch channels and so yeah it worked out well okay and it's got a few embellishments on it i'm kind of a late night shopper on ebay and etsy looking for 
little embellishments to put on it. And I've got a pretty good collection at this point. Oh, and I see you have little tack-like things on. Yeah, those are, are little those, hot fix. Are those hot fix? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't like to get too much shiny on it, but just a, just a touch. Well, it's another beautiful quilt. Thank and, you. And for those of you who don't know, Janet won the $10,000 Best of Show Award <laughs> with this quilt. And uh, and I know you have some more in the works. Where are you in the alphabet uh, you now? You know, I was hoping you wouldn't ask me which number this was because I don't remember. <laughs> I, am, I am working on number 25 right oh, now. Right. So you so only I have two more. One more. One, one more, more after yeah, this one. Yeah. Yeah, so this is, I think this is 22, I can't remember. I was going to look it up before we did this interview because I figured you'd ask me, but I don't remember what it was. But. So there are 26 yeah. letters in the alphabet, yep. and she was making a quilt for 26, 26. letters, yep. right? Yep. And they so. all have the alphabet on them they all somewhere. Do. Yep. Mm -hmm. Well, we can't wait to see the next one. Thank you, me too. All right. <laughs> and that we hope that you will enter your quilts in the AQS Quilt Contest. Just go to AmericanQuilter.com. And for those of you who like to watch videos and find out from our in, uh, quilters what they've done to make these beautiful quilts, go to youtube.com slash quilt TV. And then on this one, just look for the playlist for Des Moines 2022. And while you're there, don't forget to subscribe because then every time we post a video, you'll get an email from YouTube telling you there's a new email up there. Yeah, I watch all of them. <laughs> yeah, we all do, don't <laughs> they're, they're we? They're fun, yeah, they're fun. <laughs> all right, so join us at an AQS Quilt Show soon.